our first DVD series, we covered the topic of rebound control in great detail. However, we can never be satisfied in this area of the game. It must be an ongoing daily battle. In this segment, we will quickly review the rebound basics, discuss some new techniques, and look into many more examples of rebound control in action. In the NHL, goalies are evaluated in a very detailed way on how well they control rebounds. Being able to determine exactly the level of rebound control precision is an illuminating statistic. The best outcome of any shot on goal is possession. When you have control of the puck, you can manage the clock and control the game. Obviously, the other team can't score if you have the puck. Gut traps, glove cradles, and the kipper catch are the common techniques goalies use to own the puck. Smart goalies use very active trappers to even retrieve pucks shot below 11 inches if possible. Sending a low hard drive to the corners, many times possession saves are impossible because of location and velocity. For instance, a low hard slap shot is impossible to possess, so it has to go to the corner. There's temporary safety when the puck is placed in the corner. It gets the puck out of danger, but if one-on-one -on -one battle is lost in the corner, the puck is still quickly back in a scoring chance position. Some situations arrive where the puck is shot where you can't react in time and a block save is needed. If you can't possess it or get it to the corner, the next best option is to keep it squarely in front of you. If the man whacks it again, you are already in position. However, if you consistently leave the puck directly in front of you, the net will be filled with them. Rebounds left to the side of you are usually fatal. These juicy rebounds will typically leave you no time for any second effort battle saves. Don't quit on these pucks, just realize they are low percentage saves. Clearly, this isn't a rebound, but it is the final result of our rebound control system. Every shot on goal is graded based on the above rebound scoring system and an average is generated for the game. This stat is called the rebound controlled efficiency. What used to be forbidden is now a successful rebound control technique. Turning the glove over like a first baseman is a great skill to have to add precision in your rebound control game. Turn the glove over and follow all the way into your glove with visual lock. Try not to chase pucks across your midline. You can also use your kipper catch from your butterfly to snag these dangerous pucks with precision. We also can use our gut trap skills to control rebounds on midline shots. Many times we don't have the luxury of being set for a stationary gut trap, so we have to use a lateral gut trap. This can be used effectively when we slide over, up or down. The key is to see the puck off the stick and get a great visual lock on it all the way in. European goalies have long been adept at precisely snagging pucks shot below 11 inches. When reactionary time is present, it is a very wise thing to do. Pucks that can be handled with a glove or blocker will usually yield far better rebound control results than those that are allowed to strike the boot, break, or shin area of the pad. Too 
many goalies today have stick shyness issues? They refuse to get sticks on controllable pucks, and in many cases when they do, they deploy their sticks incorrectly. The goalie should use precise, minute movements of the stick to direct pucks out of the kill zone. The puck shot here should only strike the goalie stick. Rebounds that hit the stick and then some other part of the goalie will invariably cause a dangerous rebound. We have included drills to improve your stick development in DVD number 7. This area is called the kill zone for a reason. Any rebound left in this area will be jammed down your throat for an easy goal. Your overriding goal is to keep pucks out of the kill zone at all costs. Many times in practice, goalies carelessly watch loose pucks laying around the kill zone, allowing easy empty net tap-ins for their teammates. This can't happen. A smart goalie will go into battle mode on every loose puck around their net in practice. Poke, whack, or pull pucks in to be smothered as if a game was in progress. You must still battle no matter how futile the chances appear to be. Great saves in the game happen when you treat every puck like this in practice. In many cases, a loose puck will simply be whacked at the net as soon as the attacker can react to it. There is little concern with accuracy, only speed of release. Many of these goals go through the goalie, so in whack rebound situations, we must really attempt to deny access through us. Smart coaches will allow their goalies at least five seconds between shots on goal in any drill. Too many times shots are coming rapid fire and the goalie has no time to watch the puck as it leaves their body. Rapid fire drills will actually decrease the goalie's rebound control ability every time they are used. In practice, the goalie must strive to visually lock on pucks that leave their bodies for at least a second or two. Jess makes some key saves on whack rebounds. Notice where rebounds land when they are allowed to strike the shin or boot break area. The key on these saves is that she battles to deny access through her. When Jess almost surrenders a goal here, it ends up getting back through her. Most rebound goals are ugly, so we need to force the attacker to do something special. Lorena makes nice saves on these deflections and shows good covering up hunger. Playing out pucks like this will cause this hunger to appear automatically in game. Freddy locks one in using a solid gut trap. Many times in practice we see high level goalies that don't want to put their midsection in harm's way during a hard shot like this. If the puck is shot in this location, use the gut trap. Ian stones him on the first shot and battles hard on the rebound. Freddy shows an active stick whack on a loose puck in front. Too many goalies are spectators on these tight pucks and are victimized quite easily because of their stick shyness. A great decision is made here to stay down to avoid opening holes. Ian battles in this sequence using his active stick to clear a rebound away. Chris doesn't quit in his rebound sequence. A missed stick whack didn't prevent him from staying with it and coming up large. Pez makes a great pad save and then a quick backside recovery while down to square up to the rebound.